Hi everyone, Assemblymember Evan Lowe here in the Bay Area, city of San Ramon, here with John Chen, the CEO of BlackBerry. John, thanks so much for your hospitality. Well, thank you for asking us. Yes, well, uh, we are in the month of May, so let's begin with that. May, we celebrate as Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Mm -hmm. What does Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month mean to you? Well, it's, it, it should be a celebration, right? But, but I would say, um, you know, given all the latest news on this U.S.-China trade talk, uh, <laughs> uh, I, th I think, um, you know, Asia, Asian Pacific contribute tremendously to America, to the economy, um, to invention, and especially Silicon Valley. Right? I think there was at least one third of everybody in Silicon Valley who worked contribute to these, you know, organization are, are Asian Pacific uh, uh, heritage. Um, so it's that celebration, um, is, is the representation. So, so you know, feel, should be a a proud moment for Asians like myself, mm -hmm. and that we could contribute to this great country. Sure. Uh, no pressure on you, right? I mean, uh, being such that you are in the public eye, what do you think the obligations are of those who have benefited from our wonderful society in the United States and California and representing and maintaining a sense of identity and culture? Oh, uh, there are many. Um, I, I, I think, I think this, this maintaining identity of culture is so very important. I think this is a multicultural society, country, and I am a true believer, although you, you read it, you, you read it a lot, and uh, that, that the diversity is really a power. I mean, it's, it's something that makes this country so much more unique. And this is not only about Asian, this is not only about race, this is about background, about genders, about everything, right? religion mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I think that's, uh, that's being one. And being an Asian American, and, and I, you know, my, my background, I was born and grew up in Hong Kong. I came over and finished all my schooling and I work. And, and I like to believe that I have contributed a lot to the society. And, and as, as quote unquote, that successful leadership, hoping that create more opportunities for people behind us that were, you know, see that as a you know, model and an example that you could be successful and, and you work hard and you know, the whole America spirit and philosophy and meritocracy are real and, and, and hopefully we, we, we prove that out and, and we will pave the way for more, many more to come. Sure, sure. And I sort of, when I see you and I think about you, I look at you as sort of like a unicorn. And the reason why I mention that is because you tend to not see as much diversity as we need to see in the C-suite level. In other words, you see a lot of individuals from the Asian Pacific Islander community and others uh, that are those engineers and maybe mid-level, but not exactly quite at CC. What was it like for you to ascend to that position? It's a, it's, it's, it's a journey, um, I, 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 but, but I first have to say, um, I felt like I'm always in, I, and I work hard, and so is a lot of people, um, but I'm always in kind of the right place at the right, right time. And, and I think I made the proper choice uh, in, in my career, um, you know, even though there were, pro there were progress in the past that I actually consciously took a step back mm -hmm. in order to move forward. You know, I gone through some ups and downs, but this country, this system allows the success. Uh, and yeah, I, I feel good about where I am today. Um, I started as an engineer. I was stereotyped as an engineer. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I try to break out of that by learning on my own on things that, you know, people point out that wasn't my strongest suit. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the beginning, I don't believe it. I, I, I really, you know, people told me that you know, I probably couldn't do this interview with you in the past, you know, being wow. from Hong Kong, you know, really English is a second language and it's not naturally come to come to mind. I could have translated it in mm -hmm. my head and stuff. I was very good in math and become an engineer and get very good in that. Um, and, you know, people talk about communications and I thought they were more attacking my my accent and, and all that. But it was not that. It was the, the clarity of thoughts and ability to communicate. 
Now, you were born and grew up here, you don't have that problem. Right. And, but, so, uh, uh, so I gone through interesting times. Um, but then when I kind of dig into it and try to learn about, okay, well, people say I can't communicate very well. What in the world does that mean? And I go do my stuff and go learn to do that. And then I realized, you know what? They were right. I didn't communicate very mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that, that it was, you know. It takes practice. You yeah. have to work on it. Yeah, so I, well, I worked on it. And, and, you know, those are just one example. I, that was the biggest turning point in my career and my life. And um, most of my friends who went to very top school, sure. uh, like myself, and I, I consider myself lucky to go to very top schools, and, and, and you know, they felt they're not given the right for opportunities, and they all left or, you know, build their own businesses. They become very successful, but you never end up into the mainstream C-suite. Sure, that, that right. That was why. Right. That's why why I've gone down this path. So I, I'm very pleased at the path I've chosen. Sure. Um, and I'm glad I'm contributing. Right. Well, that's why I think um, we're so fortunate to have the opportunity to have a conversation with you. As you may know, also the state of California also would support. Diversity, and that's why we passed a piece of legislation to require a certain uh, percentage of women on corporate boards and recognizing the strength of diversity in the absolutely. state. Ab absolutely. Absolutely. That, those are good work. Yes, yes. Work. And uh, we're going to try to continue yeah. those efforts in partnership with you as well. Right. So, with respect to the company itself, now I understand that the company has just celebrated its 35th anniversary. Right. Yes, so that I am 35 years old. <laughs> <laughs> so, the company, so, uh, we are at the same age. Same age, yeah. Uh, and so, what does the next 35 years have in store for the company? Um, well, we we uh, we gone through some really interesting times as a company over the 35 years. And by the way, every company, IBM included, all goes through ups and downs. I yes. mean, people will ask me about, oh, you know, it's not that unique. Uh, the question is, better company are equipped with weathering the storm in a, in a you know kind of a negative times and be you know and take advantage of the of the good times, so to speak. So so we gone from making pagers making uh, cell phones and been very successful making cell phones. I mean, 2007, so everybody, I uh, everybody loves household that. Household name. Yeah. Household name, right? Governments and officials and bankers and lawyers and doctors and all uses our, our devices. Hit a couple of bumps in a row. And so I came in five years ago, a little bit more than five years ago, and kind of re-engineer the company. Still rely a lot on those technology that we have in security and privacy and all that, but to build out a software business instead of a hardware business. Mm -hmm. And this is really because of the business model and you know, it has something to do with profitability and cash flow and capital requirements and all that good stuff. Fortunately, we made the transition. We are now growing the business, making money, generating cash, buying company. We just spent $1.4 billion to buy a, another California company mm -hmm. in, in Irvine, California. Uh, that is specialized in artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithm for the world of security. So this will last us for the whole so-called IoT, mm -hmm. secure IoT world. This will last us for many years to come. Maybe, in, you know, maybe there needs to be a, a, yet another evolution and revolution between now and the next 35 years. Um, and I think that has a lot to do with how data are treated and used. Uh, we're very focused on things like data privacy, data governance, who got to see what, mm -hmm. um, and, and who, what's the individual rights to this. We're, we're a big believer of that. We don't, we don't monetize data, we don't sell data, we don't do anything with that. Uh, we transport it securely uh, and let the owner decide what they're gonna do with mm -hmm. the data. So, so I think that's gonna open up yet another major market for us um, in data governance and how the society, the digital society actually works. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So those are things that I, I think will last us maybe in 35 years more from now, we will be one of the leading data analytics company in the world. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just lost your, your sort of humble and your experience and uh, uh, recalculation of what actually occurred that you came in five years ago, but during that time BlackBerry was headed toward, towards a, a different path, mm -hmm. uh, whereas now you've been now seen as a fixer. Uh, what do you think about I mean, is as that a something fixer? as a fixer? Uh, clearly, the the facts show for themselves. Is, well, is that is that, a, is that a sort of a, a heavy duty to bear on your shoulders? Yeah. <coughs> well, um, one reason or the other, 
Um, this is actually the third company <laughs> I fix, uh, but everyone I fix, I fell in love with. Um, so, um, and I stayed for a very long time. Um, I, you know, I, instead of calling it fixing, it's really giving it a new mandate, kind of a new direction, a new purpose. Um, uh, and with that, you could at least have the right mentality to get the company growing instead of declining. Sure. And so, and, and I'm, I'm fortunate that I'm be able to do it for the third company uh, uh, and have the opportunity to do that. So, um, I, I think this company now is on a very good path. And, and on, a, on a path, it, it, the reason why I want to put path is because we're on the path that, you know, there's this, this extreme demand in the market. You know, how, how you manage data, how you transport the data and who gets what rights is being discussed and argued from the government to mm. the, the private citizens across the board. I mean, every day there was discussion on that. And, um, so we just happen to have the technology to provide those tools to transport, encrypt, and, and, and use the data. Um, so I, I uh, you know, so I think I think we'll be we'll we'll, we'll have a good. Next 35 years ahead. Sure. So very optimistic about the trajectory uh, ahead of us. Uh, but we are in the state of California, uh, the fifth largest economy in the world. Uh, what are the, some of the attributes, some of the great uh, things that we have in our state uh, to offer for uh, many companies like BlackBerry? Well, I think number one is talent. I think, you know, any company, any economy, any industry needs talent. Uh, talent is the few more so in technology mm. because technology is really about creativity um, and, and, and you know, this state provides a lot of talent and it also attracts a lot of talent. Uh, so I, I thought that's, that's, that's one thing that's, that, that speaks for the state. In addition to talents, um, I think we, we hit on diversity um, and tolerance. I think this mm. state you know, I've been to a number of states. You know, not every states are as open, and uh, maybe 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 overly liberal, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> but 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 it's a it, it's a very tolerating state, mm -hmm. and, and you mm -hmm. know, I mean, the policy and sure. the, you know the, the, all that, right? Um, the only knocks I have on that is too expensive in mm -hmm. the states, mm -hmm. but you know, but but other than that, I think that's uh, the third thing is geography. You know. Because technology, the fastest growing market is overseas. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. I mean, for every technology company, it's overseas. This place sits, you know, this state sits in a pretty ideal geographic locations mm -hmm. around the world. You, know, you go to go to Asia, and, you know, you could get the same amount of time. You go to London, and, you know, it's in, in back East Coast. Mm -hmm. So you can see that there's a lot of, there are a lot of advantage for, for, for the California. Sure, right? I mean, sure. I'm, I'm starting to speak like a, a California tourism board person, uh, <laughs> but, but it is a, it, it is, it is, it actually is a lot of advantage. Well, it's great to hear because clearly you travel the world uh, for an international uh, global company, so it's important to understand some of these things, but also on the flip side, and you've already touched a little bit about that and on the taxation and the high cost of doing business in the state, so I think that's something for many people to best consider about how not to rest on our laurels, but to figure out how we can continue mm -hmm. to advance uh, and uh, support businesses moving forward. Right, well. right, right. Th those two are, and then in some court jurisdiction, mm -hmm. um, it's more, it's less pro-business. Uh, and, and I think that should, but there's no one good answer for that because you don't want to be pro-business only. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that doesn't make sense either, yeah. right? Uh, because business does make mistakes, right? Uh, but on the other hand, you don't want to say, well, individual versus business, individual always wins. That doesn't make sense either. So, sure. so I think the balance needs to be tilted a little bit. Sure, sure. Well, great. So, well, just as we wrap up on a few more things, maybe some more exciting uh, anecdotal uh, uh, questions uh, for you. Okay. Uh, specifically, I know that you also had served on the board of uh, Walt Disney. Have you had a chance to take a look at the new Disneyland park ride, uh, Star Wars? Yeah, I was very fortunate. I just got off the board. I, we term out in 15 years, so I just term out. It was a tremendous experience in my life. Um, and yeah, I, got, I, I, I was lucky enough to 
because I just turned out March, so okay. I was lucky enough to have <laughs> a, a trial ride and on the some stuff and, and, and done the Galaxy Land yes. or something like that. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, I, I can only say that it's fantastic. I, I understand that all the hotel rooms and everything's all sold out, tickets and everything sold out, and, and they will not be disappointed. Uh, May 31st, but I'm not uh, paying okay. attention to the okay, date. Okay, May 31st, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, that's the date. Right. Uh, and then with the, what is the sort of the, the next uh, exciting name for a company? We've had BlackBerry, Apple, now you have Lime Bikes. What are the next fruit, any next company in terms of fruit? Or is there something specific about tech companies to which we like to be named after various fruits or vegetables? Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know anybody by uh, name after vegetables. Uh, I, I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> Fruit, fruits are okay. Um, I know orange are taken, yeah, yeah, right? The yeah, telecom, uh -huh. telecom company. Right. Uh, so what's with that? Why, why, why any, any particular? Uh, I, I, um, I'm doubt, I doubt it. I mean, uh, first off, I think it's something that consumer could relate. Uh, a lot of the tech company, whether it's BlackBerry or Apple, yeah. although we do have enterprise business, but they're very much a, a consumer-oriented company, and I think that that was probably why. A simple thing that you don't forget, a simple name. I mean, I, I guess uh, a dragon fruit is not taken. Yes, you know, right. you get a dragon, but, you know. Um, that would be your next company. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe that's uh, <laughs> avocado isn't taken, so you could take avocado. <laughs> right, but uh, avocado is a little strange, but that's okay. You know, healthy. Yes, there you go. F final question. When someone looks at you, looks at your background, say, wow, this is the American dream, the definition of success, and I want to follow in that, those footsteps. What would be one piece of advice, just one piece of advice that you would give someone that looks at you, looks at your background, looks at your core and what you've been able to accomplish? That one I, I would say um, the, 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 you have to keep up the desire to learn. I, I, I be curious. Yeah, be curious. So mm -hmm. I, 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 and to really learn something new. I, I spoke earlier about three companies that I've been helping. But, you know, I started as an electronic engineer, um, at which I went to school electrical engineering and stuff. Um, and, and I continued to want to do something, you know, stay, I would stay with the same company. The other thing, too, is this is, a, this is a advice to young people. Mm -hmm. Um, you don't have to stay with a company for 50 years. I mean, that's not what I'm talking about. But an extended period of time is important to, because you know, a lot of young people, uh, you know, they they tend to spend two, three years with a company and then they start becoming becoming jumpy. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. Now you have to understand that the company invested in you for the first two, three years. Yeah. In fact, the, your best day is yet to come yes. uh, for you to excel, mm -hmm. to move fast. But they say, hey, three years, they haven't really promoted me and all so, and, and I'm not a vice president, uh, so therefore I, you know, I should move on to something mm -hmm. else. And uh, the millennium especially. Yes, and millennium. I think they, sh they, they shortcut or they, you know, they short themselves on opportunities. You know, um, you know people invest in you for two, three years. You learn and you contribute, and then you then show what you could contribute. That usually takes five, six years, and then the people say, hey, look, you know, this person is really promotable and because, you know, that loyalty and longevity. And, and so you kind of like cut short your career yeah. before you got promoted, you mm -hmm. know, uh, or, you, or before somebody wanted to promote you. But anyway, so but, but, but for myself, I found that, you know, I saved the first company for 11 years. Then I want to do something different. I want to go from a very big company to a very small company. Mm -hmm. And so I went to this more was kind of a post IPO startup that is, you know, thing company. And and then, then I become a system person, not a circuit person. Then then I went to I went overseas for a couple of years because we sold the company. Then I went to software. Now now and I ran a company called uh, Sybase, mm -hmm. which is a Davis company. So the reason I went to software is because I, I want to learn something just completely different. I actually took a step back in my career in terms of you know, my management scope, uh, took a step back in pay, but I wanted to learn software. So I wasn't the CEO. I, I started as a president and COO of Sybase, and then a year later mm -hmm. I became the CEO. And, so, and then after that, now I, I'm in a consumer slash telecommunication company. Mm -hmm. So 
I think it's important to continue. I mean, I still want to learn something new uh, myself. Maybe I'll do something completely different sure. next, next, uh, next round. Um, but, but I think that, that make yourself current, make, your, make you have an edge. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and I would con encourage young people just continuously learning, mm. but that don't get overly jumpy. Because in the same place, you can learn a lot. Mm -hmm. right, so right. That, that was some of my advice. All right, millennials, you heard it uh, from John Chen's uh, Matt himself. Uh, longevity and making sure that you stay t stick to it, uh, but also stay uh, curious uh, throughout your years. And if you don't believe him, just take a look at his resume. Uh, John, thank you so very much. Thank uh, you. We have John Chen, CEO of BlackBerry. Thank you very much.